Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in for this webinar. My name is Vipul and I lead co-marketing for VWO. I'll be your moderator for today. For those who are hearing about VWO for the first time, VWO helps you identify leaks in your precious conversion funnel and provides tools to fix those leaks and keep your revenue growing. Today, I'm excited to have Moins Miller with us, who is the CEO and co-founder of Sleeknote, a tool to engage your web traffic with on-site messages. Thank you so much for joining us, Moins. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So before I let Moins uh, introduce himself and start with his part of the presentation, I request everyone to ask any questions you might have during the course of this presentation using the GoToWebinars questions panel. With that, Moins, let's begin. All right, all right. <laughs> so um, I hope that the, the sound uh, is working here. Uh, I uh, I can see that it's uh, the, it's splitting up here. So um, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time now, actually, Vipul. And uh, so I hope that those who are listening to this are awake and are ready, because even though it, this is uh, on a webinar, I'm kind of charged on energy here. Uh, and I've brought a slide deck full of cases and actionable takeaways. So, as I said, my name is, oh, I have to see how I can switch this. My name is Moen Smuller. I'm CEO and co-founder of a company called Sleeknote. And we are doing something that I think all of you listening to this uh, is loving. Uh, I'm completely sure that you love what we, oh shit, I need to turn off my internet connection here. Sorry, one second. Um, allow this. Wow. Um, all right. Awesome push notification. I had to close this as well. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cafe Latte, we pull. Oh, that looks very nice. I would love to get that. <laughs> Just need to close this down. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, it should not. Oh. Wow, that's a nice looking gentleman there. <laughs> uh, yes, I am leaving the pool and I'm not getting this cafe latte. And I'm not telling you my social security number either. So uh, I'm just closing this down so we can continue with the presentation here. So uh, what we're doing is that we are saying goodbye to annoying pop-ups and saying hello to sleek notes. So we are helping uh, online stores in general to work with these pop-ups, but in a more non-intrusive way and make them more personalized. Uh, we got a lot of customers in a lot of different countries, but that's all pretty boring. Instead, I want to talk to you just a little bit about Jesper and Anas. Jesper and Anas, they own the bricks and mortar shop called Skibuchigen, ski shop in English. And they sell everything you need for your ski vacation. Skis, boots, jackets, trousers, helmets, goggles, everything. And they also sell online. They truly love their shops, but they are afraid because their online sales are not increasing as they expected. And they are convinced it's because of the big fish. The big fish are taking their customers, the big marketplaces, the warehouses, the chain shops, et cetera, et cetera. And this is actually a situation for a lot of shop owners today that they fear the future. They thought that online shopping was the future, the new source of infinity growth, but it's not anymore. So actually, I talked to a lot of these shop owners in my work at Slicknote, and I asked them, what's your unique selling propositions? What do you do to differentiate from the big fish? And they say, well, Moans, it's obvious. Look at our website. We got price guarantee. We got free shipping. We got huge selection and all this stuff. And then I asked them, do any of, of your competitors also offer free shipping, quick delivery, etc.?" And they are like, yes, we guess. And then I asked them, so are your unique selling propositions really that unique? And they are like, hmm, don't know. Then I asked them, do you have competitors to your bricks and mortar shop as well? And they say, well, yes, of course, a lot, primarily the big shops and the marketplaces. And I asked them, what do you do to differentiate from these? And they say, well, Moans, it's simple. We are experts on everything you need for your ski vacation and we know our target audience very well. So we do everything we can to help people in our physical shop to find the product that matches their needs. And the big chain shops, they are so many employees that naturally they can't all be experts. Then I asked them, have you tried to do the same thing online? 
And this is often an aha moment for a lot of these shop owners that they are actually able to use some of the same tactics and strategies online that they use offline. So <clears throat> today I'll present some strategies and tactics on how to compete against the big fish. And of course, I know exactly how you can outcompete, for example, Amazon and remove them from the surface. That's also why I get these kind of weird calls from Jeff Bezos all the time. <laughs> um, no, to be honest, I don't have a magic formula. But I've done a lot of mistakes and I've done a lot of user research. And it's the fruit from all these mistakes and all this user research that I will present for you today. So today, I'll give you three examples of how you can compete against the big fish, including cases and action takeaways. And I'll also give you a three-step process that you can repeat again and again, also including links to templates and guides. All right, so <laughs> now I usually ask people if they are ready, <laughs> ready for this. Uh, it's a bit hard here to do on an online webinar, but I hope that you're ready because now we'll begin with the first example. How to compete against the big fish, example number one. Imagine that you are about to buy a new pillow. And uh, well, pillows are not something that you buy every day. So it's a bit hard to figure out which pillow to choose. You just see on a big fish website here, uh, a list of pillows where a, a, there's different pictures and a price and a product name, but you don't know what the difference is. And this is actually what I see on a lot of websites today, that most websites are simple order receivers. So most of the time, we as consumers, we don't know exactly what product we want, but we know what kind of product we want. So we maybe know the product category, but not the exact product. So let's look at another website, a bit smaller website, and how they are tackling this same challenge. They are also selling pillows, and they also have this long list of different pillows. But then when they reach around 50% scroll down on the side, they show in this little box saying, do you need help choosing the right pillow? Read our pillow guide here. And then people can click on this, and then they'll reach a guide. I'm sorry, it's in Danish, but on this page, they explain the differences on fiber filling, on nature filling, and you know, giving you all the information you know in order to make a buying decision and buy the right product in this situation. So takeaway number one on how to compete against the big fish. Don't just be a stupid order receiver. Instead, try to help and guide your visitors to find the right product. Yeah, that's takeaway number one. Let's take it to the next example on how to compete against the big fish, example number two. Now imagine that you're going on a ski vacation. I don't know how many of you who are watching this um, are skiers, uh, but uh, at least the case here in Denmark, where I'm from, uh, the case is that oftentimes we know we don't know the exact destination we want to go to, but maybe we have decided if we want to travel south to Austria, France, um, Italy, or we want to travel north to Norway, Sweden, or countries like that. And I think this is the case for a lot of skiers that they haven't decided is, um, on the exact destination. So let's look at how a big fish website is tackling this challenge. So this is Snow Ventures. And when you reach their website and you take the drop down in the top, you just see a long list of different destinations. But the problem is that you haven't decided yet where you want to travel to. You haven't decided on the destination. So what is the problem here? Well, as, as I see it, this website haven't made a real persona because this website is trying to target all the skiers in the world. And when you're trying to target all skiers in the world, you're not really targeting any skiers. So this is what you should do. This is a real family, right? We pull a real family, right? You, you, <laughs> you know this is a real family. No, this is bullshit. This is not a real family. This is what I call the stock photo trap. And uh, what is a stock photo trap? Well, first of all, look at them. Nobody is, you know, that good looking. And and the kids, they are like small angels with halos on top of their head. 
and um and then look at their teeth they are the teeth are you know smiling with this colgate smile and um also they are loaded and this is probably not your target audience so this is not how you should make a persona no this is a real family this is me and my wife Karina and my daughter Augusta and we are traveling from Denmark traveling south uh, to Austria and uh, if some of you listening to this have been on that um, uh, you know on that street or that route uh, you know what happens when you hit Munich in Germany then this happens then we got traffic jam and um, yeah that's no fun at all and also i have my little son winston on the back seat of the car um and um you know isn't he sweet <laughs> you might even say he's a little angel well i can tell you that he is not an angel he's actually quite the opposite if you ask me so uh yeah, I had a fun time with all these animations. <laughs> so you might imagine, yeah, Winston is sitting here on the back seat and he's thinking, you know, come on, Dad, what's happening? Why are we not driving? Oh, well, I can just as well let go of a little fart. It might get us driving again. And then this happens. So now we are in a traffic jam in Germany and little Winston has pooped his diaper. And now we got a real family with real needs and real wishes and now we can begin to make a persona so in this case facts Müller busco family first time skiing with the kids needs and wishes we need a great kids area no drunk danish after skiers that's really important no drunk danish after skiers close to autobahn and good supermarkets and with this information we can now begin to craft our website and this is actually a real example of a website that is also selling ski vacations. And they have just made this one small difference that instead of just showing one long list of destinations, they have made a kind of destination destination selector in the top of the website. So here you as a visitor can select, you know, is it important that it's ideal for beginners? Yes, very important. Kid friendly, also very important. After ski, not that important and then you can see the list down on below here um, is updating on the fly so now instead of just having a long list of destinations i now have a list of destinations that is ordered by relevance so i can select you know the most relevant destination for me and my family and this is actually a real case this is a customer that i've been uh, helping uh, and when we did this update on the website they saw a 19 percent uplift in bookings so, how to compete against the big fish, takeaway number two, know your customers and create real personas. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have time today to elaborate a lot on how to make personas, but I've collected uh, some good blog posts some books and videos about creating personas that you can download on this link. You'll also get a link uh, in the end of the presentation with all the links I share throughout my presentation here. So you can either write this down or you can wait for the, the master link later on. That's a little cliffhanger there. <laughs> so, um, and just for your information, we did reach our ski destination in Austria. And uh, little Winston and his crazy dad that wanted full value for money after the long car drive got on the slopes as well yes and little winston says hi all right so how to compete against the big fish example number three now imagine that the persona here is a young guy traveling to thailand um, with his friends for the first time and um, he reached again one of the big fish websites selling a lot of scuba diving masks um and um, he doesn't know which one to choose because it's the first time that he's about to scuba dive. So this was this was actually a usability test that I did. And uh, in this test, this person went back on Google and reached another website, a very small Danish website where they also sell scuba diving masks. And here they are doing a lot of things, but they're doing one very simple and very small thing very, very well. Because when you scroll down here, they have these small batches. One here says perfect for beginners, and one uh, down in the in the corner here it says ideal for skilled driver uh, divers. 
And this actually, you know, made the day for this person because he just wanted to get help. He just wanted somebody that told him that this is the mask you need if you are a beginner. And of course, in this situation, he ended up buying this scuba diving mask. So, well, this is actually about creating no-brainers. And, um, and that is kind of like something that websites, in my perspective, should think more about in general. Um, so when you work with your website, assume your visitors are always in a hurry and then try to make these small no-brainers around on your website. And just to give you another example of something similar, um, this is the case. Imagine that you are having guests this weekend and you're going to eat some spicy food and you need a good bottle of wine. Well, let's look at how you can work with these small batches on another website. You know, you need a good bottle of wine. You know, you get some spicy food. So you're scrolling down. And then you're looking at these small batches here. Uh, if I had a pointer, I will point uh, just uh, above the, um, the price. I don't think I can do that with my, with my arrow. No, I can't. Uh, but just above the price, you can see these small icons. Um, and there's one here with a chili icon, which means that this is perfect. Uh, this wine is perfect with spicy food, which is very intelligent in my point of view. And another case, just to illustrate, you can al also do this on uh, mobile. Uh, imagine that you're running a small company, you need a good and simple printer, and you reach a website like this, also scrolling down, don't really know which one to choose, but then, you know, find some, someone here or a printer here that is highlighted, perfect for small businesses. Oh, sorry, that went uh, a bit fast, um, but a little um, icon there, so you can work with that as well on mobile. And then another case here uh, around the same subject. Imagine that you work in a growing business and you want to buy an optimization workshop, but you're, but you're not sure which one to choose of these plans. And this is actually an example from my own website a few years ago where I sold these optimization workshops. So I had this one day of usability testing and then another plan where I also had A-B testing in this uh, workshop. And I sold about 80% of the light plan and around 20% of the plus plan. But actually, I wanted to sell the PLUS plan, so I tried to do some different things, and I tried to add this little batch, saying that this one, the light plan is for new businesses, and the, growing, uh, the PLUS plan is for growing businesses. But I didn't really see any difference when I tested this on my website. Then I did something quite different. I made a third plan that I called Pull, where I, well, to be honest, I just added some extra goodies that I didn't really know how to kind of deliver. But my my initial thought about this one was to make a plan that was more expensive so that the plus plan looked more affordable. And uh, when I tested this, I now sold 50% of the light plan instead of 80, and I sold 45% of the plus plan instead of 20. And actually, I also sold around 5% of the pool plan. So I need to figure out you know, how to, to make this in some way. Um, so this, I think this is what you call a decoy when you add this on your website. Uh, and actually, I tested out some different things. I tried to highlight the one in the middle. I tried to reverse the order, and nothing really happened about that. So in this case, what really made the, the tip of the conversion here was to add this extra plan so that we moved more of the traffic or, or the, the audience to the, to the plus plan in the middle. All right, so how to compete against the big fish? Takeaway number three, create no-brainers and assume your visitors are always in a hurry. And uh, if you want some more information about this online psychology kind of subjects, uh, these are some of my favorite books that I will definitely recommend. Okay, so I'm about halfway through my presentation now uh, on how to compete against the big fish. So I'll just summarize the, the first three um, takeaways here. So first, don't be an order receiver, help and guide your visitors to find the right product. And second, know your customers and create real personas. And the last one, create no-brainers, assume your visitors are always in a hurry. So what is this all about? Why are these cases working where small websites beat the big fish? Well, I believe it's because the smaller websites can easier be customer-centric. Like the story in the beginning about Skipochicken, um, 
the problem about customer centricity is that 80% of uh, companies say they're customer centric, but only 8% of customers agree. Um, yeah, that's quite a big of problem. Uh, and when I, when I, you know, when I think about customers being or companies being more customer centric, uh, I don't mean that you know you should just add another A/B test where you test the color of the button. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, Visual Website Optimizer or VWO, I love doing A/B tests. I just think that we should not do these very small tests with no, you know, significant result in any way. So. If it was up to me, I think we should just once for all kill these very small and bit stupid A-B test and kill this hippo, and then instead test, test something that really matters. Now, when I think about customer-centric, I think the right way to approach that is to make a repeatable optimization process. Something that you can do again and again, so you're not just you know doing one test here and one test there and hope that everything you know is, is becoming better. Because I believe that if you optimize without having a process, you might as well go to the casino. And um, you know there are different ways you can create this kind of optimization process. But uh, today I'll show you, I'll talk just a little bit about how we do this in Sleeknode. So we have this repeatable process. It's three three steps, and the first step is that we send out daily or to emails to uh, all our customers. Uh, and in this email, we uh, we write this. Hi, Thomas. I really appreciate you joining us at Sleeknode. If you don't mind, I would love if you answer the five quick questions below. Just hit reply and let me know. It will really mean a lot. Thanks. First question. Where exactly did you first find out about us? So when you ask your customers this, you will learn uh, what your most valuable traffic sources are and not only last click. The next one, which other options did you consider before choosing us? When you ask this, you learn which competitors you actually compete against. And the next one, which questions did you have but couldn't find answers to before buying Sleeknode? When you ask this, you learn what information you're missing on your website. And the next one, uh, what's the one thing that nearly stopped you um, from buying from us? And when you ask this, you learn the most important reasons why people are not converting. Very, very valuable if you ask me. And the last one, how would you describe Sleeknote to a friend or family member? When you ask this, you learn what words your customers use to describe your product. So I've been testing quite a lot of different questions in these auto emails. So if you want to test uh, some of these as well, uh, you can download uh, this document here in the, in the link. Um, these are the questions that we use at the moment, but uh, we test quite a lot of different ones. So uh, you might be able to find some questions there that match your business or maybe even make some new questions your own. Yes. Next step in this repeatable process, we do quarterly phone interviews. Um, I believe that if you don't regularly talk to customers, you lose the finger on the pulse. And you need that to create the best new features, the pricing structure, vision, product roadmap, et cetera, et cetera. So when we do these phone uh, interviews, which you know sounds very old school, there's just one goal, and that is, to get to know our customers better. So not to sell anything or to pitch any new products or ideas, but just get to know them better. And when you do these phone interviews, you will learn that, you'll learn how your customers' daily working lives are. You will learn what your customers are struggling with right now. And you will learn what your customers like about your service, product, or your website. You learn what your what your customers don't like about your service, product, or website, and finally, you'll learn how your customers want your service, product, or website to improve. Also, very, very valuable. So, the last step here in this repeatable process is, well, my favorite one. I think uh, this is half yearly. We do user tests, or what it should be called, usability tests, because we are not testing users; we are testing usability. And um, as you saw before, I'm actually, I've actually been teaching quite a lot of uh, doing some workshops about usability testing. 
And what I experience when I do that is that people are really into uh, the idea of usability testing and they really like it and they, you know, they want to do it themselves. But then oftentimes when I talk to them or visit them maybe half a year later, this is kind of my experience that they run and run and run and boom, nothing happens. Nothing's really happening because, you know, I don't really know actually, or I didn't know until I begin to research because, you know, they really liked it at the workshop, but nothing happens. And, and how come? Then I figure out of, or I researched on this and found out that first of all, we need a really good script. That's really, really important. A good usability testing script. And second, it's really hard to find testers. So unfortunately today, I don't have time to elaborate a lot on how to find testers, but I've made this guide where you uh, can get some inspiration on how to find testers through your customers, partners on social media, coffee shops, physical stores, trains, and using even using employment agencies, stuff like that. You can download that guide here. But uh, what I just uh, want to talk just a little bit about is how to make a good script. Because I've been testing many different usability uh, testing scripts. Um, and, and this is kind of the agenda that works best uh, for me when I, when I test this on online stores. So in the beginning, we have some small talk. And here, um, the idea of doing this is actually to make the person feel comfortable with this situation. Um, so um, yeah, just you know, ask what they've been doing, where they're from, their age, stuff like that. And then we have an introduction. And here you can actually just copy paste my introduction because this is, this is general. You can use this in, in whatever usability testing case that you have. Um, and the, the, the idea of the introduction is that the person is, you know, you're making sure that the, the person feels that they are not being tested. It's the website that we're testing. So they cannot do anything. They can't do anything wrong here. And then the next is to make a quick scenario. It could be, it's very important that it's short and it could be like this. Uh, your bike was just stolen. You use your bike every day to work. So you'll need to purchase a new one immediately. Very short. So it's easy to remember. That's important. And then now, instead of taking the, 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 the person or the tester to your own website, what is really golden here in my perspective is to take them to Google. So now you, you ask them, you know, if you're about to buy this, uh, this bike, like in the scenario, what would you do now on Google? What search phrases would you use? And then they begin to type in on Google and then probably they read some of your competitors' websites. And then you could ask, you know, is this a waste of time? You know, why, why, sh why should I see how it's going on my kind of competitors' websites? That should be on my own website. But the, the, the really interesting thing here is that after they have been on maybe two or three of your competitors' websites and you found out what's good and bad on their websites, you can take them to your own website. And, and here now, instead of just, you know, these people are telling you what's working on your website and what's good and what's bad, they tell you that what's what's good and bad compared to the competitors. So are your competitors doing something really smart that you should consider doing on your own website? Or are they, you know, having some some products that you should have, or are you just, you know, performing a lot better on all um, or competing um, uh, on, against your competitors? So this is really, really valuable to get them to the competitors' website first and then to your website. And then you can give them some tasks. Uh, you can also ask some final questions, all that. All right, so you can see here the links here just below the usability test script, the text in the top. Uh, there's some links to the script and also um, a checklist that you can uh, that you can download so you know you're, you're set up when you're about to do your own usability testing. So when you do usability, usability test, you'll learn the most critical, critical usability issues on your website. You'll learn why people click on specific Google search results, and you'll learn how potential customers compare you to your competitors. And remember when you do this, that you need to learn how customers behave and what they need. In other words, focus on their problem, not their suggested solution. I'll just say that one more time. Focus on their problem, not their suggested solution. That's, that's really important. And also, when you do usability tests, remember that the best usability tests leave you in tears. 
So just to prepare you for what you're into here, if you haven't done this before, this will probably be you before the usability test begins. We've just launched the new website. What can possibly go wrong? And then this will be you when the usability test begins. I love that little fellow. <laughs> And this will be your, this is you when the usability test is over. And your developers, when you pass the results from the usability test, come on, did you test with monkeys? Sure, that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and your developers, when you tell them that you will now do usability testing regularly, it's going crazy, that little monkey. And this is when you go from being best friends to worst enemies. So now you're prepared for what you're into when you're going, you know, beginning with these uh, usability testing. All right, so just to summarize uh, the last process here, the repeatable optimization process. So all two emails, every day we send them out. If you got a lot of customers, you can send them out to, I don't know, 5% of them or 10%. You know, that's up to you and the business that you run. Every quarter we do the phone interviews and uh, half yearly we do the usability testing. All right, so I'm soon about to end my presentation here, but as I promised in the beginning, you will be able to download all my slides uh, on this URL, sleeknote.com slash uh, VWO. Um, and I don't know what that character is in English and webinar 2019. Um, Yes, and also feel free to email me directly if you got any questions or anything you want me to elaborate on or whatever. Uh, and then also, just in the end here, remember that if you want to get intelligent and non-intrusive pop-ups on your website, you can try out Sleek Notes. Of course, I'm not saying that you should buy Sleek Notes. I'm just, you know, I'm not a salesman, not at all. No, 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 no. I'm not selling anything here. I'm just saying you could consider trying Sleek Notes. All right, I'm just taking some water here. Right, so don't be an order receiver. Don't try to compete on free delivery and free returns and even bigger selection or Facebook likes. Instead, try to be customer centric and create this repeatable optimization process. And if you do that, I'm sure you will be able to beat the big fish. That's it for me, thank you so much. I hope all of you listening to this enjoyed the presentation and uh, I'm up for some questions if we have some of those. Yep, hi Mugans. Uh, I really don't know how to describe uh, this presentation. It's it's so full of insights, it's full of beauty, it's full of fun. I'm sure our audience must have loved it too. But I'm still sad that uh, you didn't fill up the form that I had. Uh, Mogens, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I was, just, I was just saying that I'm so sad that you didn't fill up the form uh, with my face on it. it was a coupon, so I, I thought it would oh, yeah. fill it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should should have done that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. And I hope it's okay. I borrowed a little picture of you in uh, in the presentation. I it was a bit hard finding pictures of you fine. online, but I but I found one. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, and I really think that uh, little Winston must have really, uh, that he really has found a solution for clearing the traffic. So I just want to <laughs> thank him for that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that uh, was a long trip. Right, right. <laughs> sure, so I think we can now start with our Q, uh, question and answers uh, section. And I have a few questions for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so before I take up this question, I just got a message from Susan, she says, oh, hi, uh, it was a great presentation. Thanks for the useful points there. Oh, great, great. Thank you, Susan. I'm really happy to hear that you uh, you, you like the presentation. That means a lot. Sure. So, uh, so my first question to you is, uh, you know, when you are competing with the incumbents in the market, motivation and keeping that strong is quite important, right? So mm -hmm. how you recommend a team, a business, you know, a leader to keep up their own motivation and keep fighting 
you know this this battle of winning the customer so if i understand it correctly it's it's a question about how to keep the motivation high when you are in a competitive kind of landscape or in general how how you is that the correct that's correct okay okay that's a very interesting question well i think there is a lot of different ways to answer that um well, I, I, but I can take like uh, some examples from from my own business here. We are in Slick Note, and we are also in a quite competitive landscape where we got customers all around the world, and uh, and it can be a bit hard, especially if somebody is copying you. We've we've experienced quite a few times that you know somebody is have made a system or a website that is kind of like one to one with our with our website, uh, and um, and for me personally is to you know it can sound like a cliche but to focus on your own business and to do that as good as possible and to cannot come as a surprise for those who have seen my presentation here but listen to your customers because you know there might be some some competitors and they're doing a good job on something but in my perspective if you are the one that is listening like mo the most to your customers you will also be the one that is, you know, is having the most kind of relevant uh, products to your customers. Um, so that is, that's always been my strategy. You know, no matter what happens, I know that 95% of all companies in the world are not talking regularly to their customers. And that can sound pretty weird, but it's, but it's, 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 you know, it's true. So if you will, if you want to be competitive in general, it, it can, in my perspective, come down to something that simple. To actually do this, the you know this, some of the steps that I that I showed here in the last um, in the last part of the presentation, to have phone interviews, to sh write out these personal emails, uh, the email that I showed you before. I, I'm not sure that I I said uh, I I said that in pre in the presentation, but it is actually an, an auto email, but it's sent from my email, and I'm answering all the. The, the feedback on those um, on that email, so that I get that it's not like our marketing department or customer success. It's from me, and I'm asking it uh, and I'm uh, answering it, which which kind of give me a finger on the pulse on where our customers are all the time. So um, so so I think that that will be uh, be my answer here. I can talk a lot about you know how to keep you know a great culture and how to motivate people in general, but I think if you if if we look at this competitive kind of angle on it, I think the best way to keep ahead of competition in general is to be the five percent of of companies in general that are actually listening to their customers. Right, that makes sense. Um, we have another question from Abhijit. Uh, so Abhijit is asking that. So basically, he's referring to one of your earlier slides, right? Uh, and he's asking that he has an e-commerce company, but he's really struggling to find usability testers. So if mm -hmm. you could just repeat how to get uh, usability testers and where can you find them? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I will, I will uh, recommend uh, the, the person here to, uh, to download that guide uh, that I linked to. You can find that in the, in the slides. Um, it's not like a huge guide, but I got some inputs there. But just to, I can talk just a little bit about some of the things in there. What what I or what we are usually doing when we are finding usability testers, testers it is kind of hard. Uh, but uh, first of all, you need to offer them something for their time, um, because you probably will need them to take maybe an hour off in the middle of their work day. So normally we will offer them um, um, uh, sorry a, a, a promo code or a discount code something like that to Amazon or to some. You know, big big store where everybody can uh, can shop, uh, and we usually it's usually about fifty dollars, I guess. I think that's uh, the amount that we use. And then I think the the most the easiest way to get it is to search for these persons, uh, or these people in the you know the near or close to your office, because it it if you know if people have to travel an hour back and forth, that's like you know now it's three hours they need to take off. But if they are like a neighbor to you, or if they are, you know, there's some big company just beside you, you know, I'll just, I've done that quite a lot of times here where, where we uh, work or where we live. I've just made some flyers, just very simple flyers, made them on my own printer. And then I just walked around and, and giving flyers to uh, these different companies 
where it's just like, you know, we need a person who can help us. It doesn't take any skills or anything like that. And you'll get $50 for an hour of work uh, and my email address. Uh, so there are different ways to do it, but that's actually the most effective way in, in my perspective. Um, and then also, I think last time we, we did user testing with eye tracking as well, we, uh, we actually promoted it on Facebook. So we make Facebook ads and made, and made those ads very targeted um, on, on, the, on you know, location close to our office. And, uh, and then we had just a very small teaser text there and, and made a quick, quick uh, landing page. So uh, there are lots of different ways you can do this. If you just want to be, actually one of my favorite ways to do it back in the days was to go on a train uh, when, we, when we had to do mobile uh, usability testing. If it was not, you know, had to be long, uh, very thorough testing. So go on a train. People normally on trains, at least in Denmark, don't have a lot to do. They are looking at their phone, you know, uh, either way. So ask them if they have like 10 minutes and you can give them a promo code or a discount code or you know gift certif certificate or whatever and then give them some tasks normally people will be very willing to help uh, with that so uh, that is just a, a you know three ways to do it and then i'll again recommend uh, reading the, the the little guide that i, that I linked to earlier on right uh, hope you got the answer Vijit, and also uh Moen's had a lot of links uh, that you could actually go to and you know learn more about how to you know what questions to ask to in the in the in the testing process how to get the testers and everything about the process so yeah I'll be sharing the uh, presentation deck uh, after this webinar and you can go ahead and look have a look at it and also you can directly go to this link that is on your screen right now uh, and download yep. slides for yourself. Right. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah, I, I forgot that. We got the slides right there. Just type that that URL, and you got the link there too. Uh, actually, not that the URL is not actually going to the presentation. It's going to a landing page where there's a button where you can download all the slides. But there's also links on that page, so there's a direct link to that uh, usability testing guide that I just talked about earlier, or just before. Right. So uh, yeah, that, that the URL up there. Uh, that's the only thing you need to uh, to get to all the material. Right. So I just have one last question for you, Moens. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a data question, basically. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, are there any top three or four metrics uh, that will change or that will show you the impact uh, when you implement your new personas? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, a few metrics that will kind of... So, so well, yeah, I, so one, of course, will be the uptake in the revenue. Right. Uh, so there are. Are there any other metrics like uh, the cohort retention cohorts, or uh, the increase in web traffic, or the increase in transaction volumes, or something like that? Yeah. Well, definitely. I think you're you're right in. You know, first of all, look at look at some uh, look at look at the cohorts of you know wh when you implemented this and and see how if if there's any difference there. And but but I, I think in general. I have a bit of hard time look at these kind of um, stepping stone metrics. You know, what what should matter here is is this tipping conversions in general. So, are you getting more sales? Are you getting more? You know, of the 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 main actions on your websites. It could it could be I don't know if you're generating leads or you know getting customers. You should be able to see a difference there if you if you are not working with personas today and you you begin to do that it, it should be visible you know all the way to the uh, from the top to the bottom of the of the funnel um i i'm to be honest i don't i don't have a good answer on specific metrics that that is that is tailored to when you make a new persona um but what i will you know what i will do besides looking at at you know the conversions in general is also Looking at, of course, doing some A/B tests, see if that changed anything, but but also the usability testing of it, and see if you've been usability testing before you've implemented this new kind of persona updates. Then do another test after and see if it if if it fits the the you know the user more now. Uh, that is that is normally the way I would do it, and then of course look at the the, the overall conversions. Right, that does make a lot of sense. I think uh, it really depends on what you are trying to change. Right. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So that will that will determine what metric you've been looking at. So yeah, uh, that was. Uh, thanks for the answer, Mugen. Uh, the it's a really it's a really good it's a really good point that you have there that you know it's it's hard to give a one metric a one right. persona metric because it can be like hundreds of different things that you are kind of you know updating on your website based on what you find out on the persona. So in this case with a with a ski website, it was to make a destination selector in the top. So in that part, it, you know, the metrics there might be how many people are actually getting to the destination pages and what is the conversion rate to that page um, and, and clicking further from, from that. But, but that is just one example from one website from one industry. If it was an online store selling shoes, it might be completely different. It might be, you know, how many times they looked at the different pictures or if they opened that up in any way. So, um, so, so yeah, I think it's it's very hard. It it, it depends. <laughs> right, the answer it depends. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's always a good answer to everything, right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, thank you for the answers, Moins. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, the effort that you put into creating such a beautiful and insightful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great pleasure, and I hope that people got some value and some output out, out of it. And uh, as I said before, just you know, feel free to shoot me an email if you got any follow-up questions. Uh, some of you, I will be happy to help you. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, before I close this webinar, I actually have an important news to share with you guys. Uh, I feel very proud to announce uh, BWO's first online summit, Convex, where we are celebrating experiment-driven marketing. Uh, Convex will feature 15 experts from Microsoft, Booking.com, HubSpot, Kaspersky, and other leading businesses who have seen growth uh, in their businesses by means of, you know, doing conversion optimization the right way. So I would really appreciate if you uh, go ahead and sign up for this event. Uh, it'll be a lot of valuable insights for you there. Uh, so once I close this webinar, uh, please fill in the survey that will turn up. Uh, your feedback will help us a lot in terms of improving our future webinars. Have a good day, everyone.